Hi there, I'm watercolor artist Angela Fair and today, uh, thank you for joining me today as I do a product review. We're going to move straight to my work surface and I'm going to show you what I've been given to review today. Okay, this is a light tablet. This is from D.B. Meyer on Amazon and uh, it was sent to me to review and I'm excited to be trying it because I'm kind of old school. For many years uh, when I first started painting, light tables were what was available and uh, you know they had fluorescent lights in them, a big pane of glass and this heavy metal framework. And so to only a light tablet or table uh, you had to have a great deal of space and of course a, a budget that could afford it and so it was generally only something that was owned by graphic artists and and uh, people who f used it on a very regular basis so for someone who's a painter or a hobbyist or someone who wouldn't use it every day a light table was just out of out of the budget and out of reach so it never even crossed my mind as the LED technology came out and and things became smaller and lighter and more compact that a light table would be something a light tablet would be something that I could use and when the folks at DB Meyer approached me uh, I got all excited because it's something I've kind of always wanted to have and uh, so I want to show you a couple applications for using it so first of all a great use for a light tablet is to you to transfer a drawing onto uh, your watercolor paper. When I'm sketching I tend to make a lot of mistakes and this is a fairly badly drawn rose uh, but you know I don't you don't want to do your preliminary sketching on your watercolor paper because it's very hard to erase those marks without damaging the tooth of the paper, um, creating smudges that just don't ever really come off. So we want to do our preliminary drawing on scrap paper, just like I've done here. But then the challenge is how do you put it onto your watercolor paper? And you can use uh, transfer paper, um, which is very similar to carbon paper. It has a graphite layer, and then you put your drawing over top, the transfer paper in between and you just trace over your drawing. The problem with graphite paper is it's often very, it, it often goes down darker than you'd like and, uh, and again those lines are hard to erase if you decide you want to remove them. I like having a little bit more control. So this idea of uh, tracing using the light tablet, and this light tablet has three light settings. This is the first setting, then a little brighter, and then very bright indeed, and you can adjust that depending on your paper. And uh, Watercolor paper tends to be a little bit thicker. This is a 140 pound paper, but I'm going to show you how it works for 300 pound as well. So on a 140 pound paper, you can just barely see the drawing on the lightest setting. It's a little bit too pale, so we brighten our, our light and it's already much better or, or we can go right to the brightest setting. And I would ordinarily tape my drawing down, tape my paper, and then with a pencil, very lightly, and I like using a, a 2H or a hard pencil because the lines tend to be a little bit lighter, and I would just trace my lines onto my paper. And that's one way to use it. Um, I'm going to show you some other applications as well, but let's just take a look at how our drawing would show through on a 300 pound paper, because I think that could be very useful as well. I really like the heavier paper. Okay, so this is... Okay, so this is the drawing uh, underneath 300 pound Arches watercolor paper and as you can see you can still see the lines they're not super dark but they're certainly uh, dark enough for you to be able to trace your sketch and get it onto your watercolor paper without having all those you know without having all the mistakes and smudges that you might have if you'd sketched right on your paper so that's good news for watercolor artists we can trace right through onto this thicker paper using the D.B. Meyer light tablet. You might be surprised that I would find a use for a light tablet. If you follow me on YouTube or Facebook, you might already know that I don't do a lot of sketching. I don't use my pencil a lot when I'm painting. I prefer to start just with my painting and go straight to watercolor. So how would I use a light tablet in my own painting application. I'm going to show you that right now. Um, here I have this little lettering. Uh, one of my one of my hobbies is is doing some modern calligraphy. So I have this little lettering piece that I've made up, and I'm going to put it on to transfer it onto my watercolor paper. So we'll just turn the light tablet back on. Again, I can see through it. Even on the second setting, I can see quite well. But I want you to be able to see too. So we'll put it on the brightest setting. And I guess if I could count to three, that would probably work better. I'm going to tape my word to my paper so that if I make any, if I accidentally bump it, I'm not out of luck. 
here because uh, nothing like tracing something carefully and then knocking it crooked and having to adjust until you get it perfect again. Just a little bit of tape there. Uh, I'm not taping to the light tablet because that's not really necessary. It's the, the, oh, the top paper and the image that I don't want to bump. And I'm going to use some Pabeo drawing gum. This is a masking fluid and it's my preferred masking fluid for when I'm using masking fluid. And you can use it with these silicone color shapers. They are really useful because they, um, they're easy to clean up. Or you can use your, the drawing gum with a brush, which is what I'm going to do now. You do not want to... <laughs> You'll ruin your brush if you try to just dip your brush straight into the drawing gum without protecting it in some way. And so what I do to protect my brush when I'm using uh, masking fluid or drawing gum is I just put a little bit of liquid soap on the bristles. So I just have some hand soap over here. And I just give those bristles a nice good saturation with the hand soap. There we go. You can see a little bit on my fingers there. And that just coats the bristles so that they don't get permanently attached to this drawing gum. Now you do not want to ruin an expensive watercolor brush with masking fluid. And I did that many times before I learned about the soap, the soap trick. So I'm just going to quickly go over my lines using the drawing gum to mask out the word that I've written here. Okay, so my masking fluid has been applied. I need to wait for it to dry and I, need to, I want to make sure it's completely dry before I start painting. If your masking fluid is still wet, still a little bit tacky in some spots, it will want to bond with your paint and with your paper and then you're just going to have a permanent mess. So we're going to let this dry completely. Some areas, uh, as it dries, it changes color so you'll be able to tell when it's completely dry. And then we'll come back and do a fun little watercolor wash over top. I love that with this technique I don't have any pencil lines at all when my painting is complete and I'll show you what I mean in just a few minutes. So my masking fluid is dry and as you can see I have something that beautifully matches my original lettering. So now we can go in and have a little bit of fun with our masked lettering. I'm going to move my light table out of the way. I'm just pointing out here how nice and slim it is. It's just um, well, not even a half an inch thick, I'd say maybe three-eighths of an inch. And it's got some uh, little bumper feet on the bottom so it doesn't skid across the table and land on the floor. Very nice and portable. I'm just going to take my paper here and do a beautiful wash of some of my favorite colors. And uh, so let's give that a go. The brush I'm using today is a Princeton Neptune number no. 4 quill brush. It's got a nice full body that holds lots of water and paint. And uh, I find when you're doing a wash, you want to have lots of juicy color. So I'm just going to start throwing some color down on my paper. This is a beautiful quinacridone violet. This here is some Schmincke red violet. Let's add some other colors. Um, what have I been loving lately? In Danthrin Blue. You can let the color, tilt your paper to let the color run. The paper I'm using today is Indigo watercolor paper. This is their 140 pound cold press. Cadmium Yellow. I think we need some red. Not, well, it's kind of dull. It's a cadmium red, and cadmium's a little bit opaque, so it doesn't have that beautiful transparency. Uh, it's not as transparent, uh, anyhow, as other, other colors. Let's add some green gold, another favorite of mine. And uh, A little more green gold on this side and a little bit of cobalt teal as well. They make good good buddies together. 
And you can see my paper's curling up a little bit. That's not a really big deal for something that's just a quick wash. Um, although if you want to take the time, you can tape your paper down so it stays a little flatter. Once the painting is dry, it'll flatten out to some degree. And if it doesn't flatten out as much as you would like, you can always iron it. Uh, I do it face down on paper towel or between two layers of paper towel um, on a light steam setting with my iron. And that smooths it out perfectly for framing. So we're gonna let this dry again. If you're using masking fluid, you never want to remove the masking fluid until after everything is completely dry. So we're gonna let that sit and dry and then we'll come back and remove the masking fluid and take a look at our result. I could do more with my wash. I could add some salt spatter. I could uh, use uh, cling wrap. I could use uh, spatter to spray some color onto the page. You know, there's a lot of fun things you can do when you're working with watercolor in a fluid wash like this. So our watercolor is completely dry now and this is where you can decide if you want to do more layers. I mean masking fluid will, uh, you know, it'll, it'll work as long as you leave it on, although I don't recommend leaving it on for really extended periods of time because it will start to bond with the paper and you want to keep it in a cool dry place uh, while it's on your paper. I'm just going to remove it. You can use uh, your finger just to rub it, although if you have a lot of masking fluid, you'll get a blister after a while. Don't ask me how I know. And, uh, or you can use an eraser or a rubber cement pickup tool. My rubber cement pickup tool has gone missing, so I'm just going to use this white plastic eraser and just lightly lift. And uh, as you can see, we have a lovely white background left behind. The particular pink that I use, the Schmincke Red Violet, is a very staining color and it's actually so staining that it actually did bleed under my masking fluid, which I've never seen happen before. Usually the masking fluid pr provides a barrier, but I think this paper just absorbed a little more moisture right un under the surface of that masking fluid. So one thing you can do if you want to is, you know, take a little brush and maybe do, put a little shadow. Um, I think it would make the letters look a little more three-dimensional if we had a little bit of shadow maybe on the one side. So I'm going to give that a try. And the trick with shadows is just what it always stay to the same two sides. So I'm doing the left side and the bottom. And then that keeps your look nice and consistent. And as you can see, that just brings the letters out just a little bit more. So I'm hoping that gives you some ideas into how you could use a light tablet. And maybe they're like you, you like me. Maybe like me, you've always thought a light tablet was something you wouldn't be able to afford. Um, it's wonderful that they now are available in this nice, light, thin size. They're easily portable. Uh, the features here are just um, make it really easy to have, have this tool on hand. Even more awesome, I have a 20% off discount um, for, my, for viewers of my channel. Uh, take a look at that in the description. There's a link there you can use to save 20% off this light tablet. Uh, let me know how other uses you might have thought of for a light tablet. And uh, I'm always looking for, for new and creative ways to use the tools that I have. If you found this video useful and you are interested in learning more about watercolor from me, you can subscribe to my channel. I actually do weekly live video lessons. You can check out my content on my website, angelafair.com, and my online learning site where you receive structured, focused, targeted lessons that will help you just surge ahead in your watercolor journey. And you can find that at learn.angelafair.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.